What does the theory mean in that in evolutionary theory? It's yeah, it's uh, it's almost nostalgic, like talking about these debates yeah. again because I just, you know, college student me is just like this is what I did yeah. online is talk about these these issues. Um, yeah, the whole just a theory idea, uh, miss again, it's a misunderstanding of of what a theory means in science. Um, people tend to think, oh, it's like an educated guess, maybe, or it's just. It's just a wild guess. It's just a theory. That's how we use it sort of colloquially in our everyday conversation. But when scientists talk about a theory, it is not just a wild guess. It's it's not even just an educated guess. It's a, a thoroughly tested uh, framework that interprets many different lines of evidence and facts. So, um, and it's important to distinguish between what facts are and theories too. So facts are just sort of the world's data you know, how a distance from Earth to the sun, uh, here's, you know, the, the gene frequencies in this species changed from this to that and over a couple of generations. Those are just facts anyone can verify on mm. their own. Um, and then there's the theoretical framework that explains how, uh, you know, how the, why we see this, the pattern in the fossil record, why we see a certain pattern with the species that emerge on continental islands versus volcanic islands that are it has to do with how uh, how old they are and with what the, the fauna that's coming from the nearby continent versus uh, uh, you know a neighboring island or something um, the evidence from the the genomes and how uh, this this shows the the relatedness and ha how evolution occurs by mutations and selection um, you know any one of these lines of evidence is like tremendous evolution uh, evidence for the the fact of evolution that evolution takes place. But then all of these combined in this theoretical framework, um, it's it's just such an insurmountable amount of, of evidence that all points in the same direction uh, for the fact that evolution is is uh, a, a legitimate thing. And there's the fact of evolution that life has changed over time. That's an undeniable fact. That's just an observed thing. And then there's the theory of evolution that's the mechanisms that we use to explain how this process occurred. So some people will say, well, how does evolution explain this one thing? We don't know how the the joint of the weasel frog evolved. That's a weird looking thing. You can't explain that. Therefore, you know, evolution's wrong or something. Well, just because we don't know like aspects of it or maybe even aspects of the theory, um, maybe we, we can't explain certain things or at least Maybe some people don't think it's sufficient to explain certain things, but that still doesn't mean that the fact of evolution is co incorrect, that animals didn't evolve. So it's, it's important to keep the fact and the theory as separate. Do, do separate we have things. any competing theories that are, that are scientific that go, oh, you know what? It might be this other thing. No, there's, there's nothing else. Hmm. So, I mean, there's other ideas that have been incorporated into evolutionary theory. I mean, Darwin did some of this very early on. So he had his idea of natural selection. Um, but then there was this seemingly glaring contradiction that he would see something like a male peacock that is just handicapped by this tremendous amount of plumage to the point where they can barely even fly. They're just advertising to predators saying, like, kill me. I have no defenses. I'm this huge target. And this was a major big problem for Darwin's theory because it's like, well, if it's all about survival, how can like this thing, this is a huge handicap. We would not expect this to evolve. And then he did what a good scientist does and just thinks about it really hard and collects evidence. And he showed that, well, he, he developed the concept of sexual selection saying, well, the peacock might be at a disadvantage for long-term survival because of this handicap, but this comes uh, with the great benefits because the individuals that have the most attractive plumage have an overwhelmingly higher number of offspring. And at the end of the day, evolution cares about differential reproduction. Mm -hmm. um, how many copies of your genes are you putting in the next generation? And so you could say that, well, sexual selection is this other theory, but it was incorporated into Darwinian evolution. It's all part of uh, of, of Darwin. Um, there's ideas of neutral selection of, you know, not all traits are adaptations. They can just sort of be, they can hitchhike with adaptations. They can just be the result of neutral genetic drift. Um, yeah, there, there's been all these interesting discoveries along the way, um, but they all fit really snugly within the pre-existing framework, which mm -hmm. also gives good evidence that the framework is super robust uh, because none of these new discoveries have conflicted with it. They've all just settled 
so perfectly within it and actually enhance the entire, you know, it gives more insights to other aspects of the theory we might not have had before. You'd think the ones, the animals that have survived through sort of sexual selection, I would think over time they would die out because, okay, they're reproducing a lot within, so it's good within your tribe to have this big peacock feather and stuff, uh, but you're not actually adapting for your environment, you're going to get killed easily. How have they survived yeah. this long? Well, I mean, I, I suppose it could. I mean, you might be able to have, you know, if you introduce a new predator that's that has a you know a specialist for for peacocks or something, they could wipe them out at such a high rate where you know the the handicap isn't overcome by reproduction and things like that. Um, I mean, it, it's going to depend on the environment. If the environment changes suddenly, then yeah, that could it could be it could be a dead end potentially. Um, but if it's more gradual change, which is sort of how it's been more in, in the past. You know, we're we're seeing a lot more mixing now because we're introducing species like crazy across uh, across borders that would naturally mm. be like barriers to these types of things happening. Um, and it's that's what invasive species are. They're just you know they came from somewhere else and they're free from the the pressures that have kept them in check in their previous habitat. And now they're just running amok in, in current habitats because they have no predators or uh, the environments are just a certain way for them. So yeah, I mean anything anything could definitely happen. But there there's situations mm. where it could be. Uh, could become a, a a real handicap rather than just sort of uh, a handicap in the the sexual selection sense. One of the issues I've got with um, talking to lots of different kinds of people with different theories and different knowledge and whatever it might be uh, is that I've realized, I've come to realize that I have to take everything on faith. Um, I, I realized this while I was debating a flat earther that I don't know how to prove the earth is not flat. So I've taken it on faith from scientists and textbooks and things that it's not. I've never seen it be spherical. I believe 99.9% .9 that it is because I don't know why these people would all be lying and I don't know how that might happen. Um, and I've not seen the fossils and things like that. So I suppose you scientists are asking us just as religious people, right, to take everything on faith. And I'm not, I'm not, it's not a criticism. I don't know what other way it can be. Yeah. I mean, you can't expect everyone to go out on a, on a dig. And then if you're out there, how can we know that these <laughs> bones weren't just put in there for us to dig up later on? And not everyone's going to go be able to do, you know, genetic testing on their own. And how do we know the outputs of the computers? It's not behind the scenes. So, I mean, there, there is a lot of things you just sort of have to, I don't like using the word faith here, but maybe you have to, to trust, trust the process. Uh, there's a lot of aspects of, of biology that aren't politicized, where there's no reason where we should suspect that the population geneticists studying fruit flies or or guppies or something have an agenda for what they're doing, but they're using the same genetics that we're using to study humans, mm. that type of thing. And so um, there's a lot of students that are out there who join genetics labs who aren't doing anything with humans. They're just doing their stuff with whatever species that has no political ramifications whatsoever. There's no reason for them to be biased and skew the data, except maybe climb the ladder and publish papers or whatever. That's, a, that's another story. Um, but yeah, you, you just... Uh, you need to do the work and try to understand the history of these ideas, um, the history of fields like genetics, like genetics, how we got to the current methods that we have right now, uh, from from Mendel up until now. And there's a rich history. It takes time. I mean, you have mm. to you have to you have to do your own research on these things and not just watch clips mm. on TikTok or you know even coming from the right or the or the left or wherever it is. Um, and you know, if you just want to be agnostic about these things, then that's that's a perfectly reasonable thing uh, to do as well. Um, otherwise, you know, refrain from having strong opinions until you've done a sufficient amount of research. We talked about the problems with uh, the gender ideology. You know, prisons, uh, sports, women's spaces. That's part of the issue. If we, you know, policies. What is for you the biggest danger with people believing that evolution didn't? isn't isn't is only a theory is not real i think evolution roots us in reality i mean i got into evolution because i thought it helped answer a lot of big i guess some of the fundamental questions of existence really just like who we are what are we doing here how long have we been here um why do we behave these certain ways you know why do our brains work like this why do we d deceive ourselves the social dynamics that we have why are we so uh, afraid of being ostracized from our groups, that types of stuff. Mm. Um, dating, m men and women's interactions, like all of this can be explained. You know, we would not know all the details, but like large swaths of it can be explained with evolutionary theory. 
And if you don't have this framework of it, it's just a, this complete chaotic mess. Mm. Um, but you talk to the evolutionary psychologists, they can talk about you know, why Why are males more sexually violent? Like this explains incarceration rates, explains, uh, you know, sexual assaults, um, you know, differences between males and females in the types of uh, uh, hobbies we get interested in, you know, people versus things. Um, this is this is all fits in within an evolutionary framework and it, it makes sense of the world in a way that we would just have absolutely n no way to explain hmm. if we didn't have this. So, and, and it seeps into everything. We're evolved, our behaviors have evolved, our bodies have evolved. For medicine, we need, you need to know about evolution for, uh, you know, if you're gonna get a, a transplant, you know, we know because of evolution that if you have an identical twin, hey, you should maybe get a kidney from them. Or if you have a brother, that's the next best thing. Um, you probably don't wanna go too much further out, uh, you know, from that, you'd, if, if you're gonna get, you know, a cross species transplant, I think they've done with chimpanzees before, you know, they're closer to humans. You know, might not want to go for a pig because that's even more distantly related. This is all explained by by evolutionary biology. Yeah, my worst nightmare of a close family member needs yeah. a kidney. I suppose the worst yeah. is that I need a kidney. Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends what the frame I'm looking yeah. at. Um, and and speaking of that, brilliant. <laughs> speaking we're in New York, of course. Um, speaking of that, sort of yeah, ostracism as you, as you mentioned from the tribe. You know why 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 it feels so bad to be ostracized. I do want to use this moment as a plea for people to speak up centrists to speak up moderates people who, who are not so far one way or the other and who are tired of magical thinking because we need more people to do 